Hi, I'm Philip. Today I want to show you how to configure security in Elasticsearch and Kibana approximately within eight minutes or so. Why? Because even though security is free, far too few clusters have it enabled. And even though we have this next screen even enabled by now, many people still don't do it. So let's see how we can actually do that. Um, pretty much like any good cooking show, I have prepared a little setup already here for you. So, or for this demo, so we have Elasticsearch 0, 1, 2. So we have a three node cluster and then we'll add Kibana to that on top of it. So I'll start with the Elasticsearch 0 folder, but any one of those would do. The first thing I need to do now is I want to generate a certificate so that the Elasticsearch nodes can talk securely between each other. Next up, I will copy that certificate to the other two nodes it's pretty simple here since it's all on the same server, but all three nodes now have the same certificate to actually communicate securely between each other. This was a self-signed certificate, but to actually have a proper one for your browser or to curl Elasticsearch from the outside, you want to have an official certificate and I will use Let's Encrypt. So let's generate that Let's Encrypt certificate. I'm using the cert bot that is being provided by Let's Encrypt to actually generate that one for you. Um, so I will actually generate that for my domain Xera WTF because that's definitely the right domain for any demo and hopefully it works. Looks like it did. So first thing then is I need to change the permissions of those certificates because I run everything as my regular Ubuntu user here. That's why I'm changing the permissions and then I'm basically linking that certificate that Let's Encrypt has generated for me into the Elasticsearch folder for all um, three Elasticsearch nodes. So those should have been put together now. Um, now, quick look, what we do we have configured here in Elasticsearch? So we have a cluster named Secure Elasticsearch. Um, it binds to localhost and the external interface as well. Um, this one here speaks on 9,200 for HTTP. Elasticsearch 1 will speak on or will open up port 9,201 and Elasticsearch 2, 9,202. Um, the three nodes will talk to each other on transport on these three ports. They will form one cluster. We have security enabled and I have actually enabled where to find the certificates and which certificates are being used. So this should be all the security setup that we need for that cluster. Um, now let's try to actually start server here. So let's start the first one and in parallel I will um, start the second one. Um, let me just uh, change the folder here. So this one should start the second one and this one here should start the third node um, of Elasticsearch. Let's see what they're doing here. So you can see here we have publish address. Um, so this seems to be starting up and is almost done already. Now, while the cluster has formed in the background, can I already query and connect to it? Um, let's give that a try. No, while HTTPS is working as expected, um, the cluster is giving me missing authentication because I didn't set up, well, authentication as I should have because that's what I had in the configuration. So what we need to do is we need to generate those um, passwords now. And I'm using just Elasticsearch Setup Passwords Auto, which will just generate me a bunch of default credentials um, for the various users. And yes, I will um, print all of those out. Um, those are being generated and set for me, so we can just use those. Um, now, if I want to give that a try, here for the Elastic user, um, for the Elastic user, um, this is the password we want to use here. So I will just copy that in here. Then you can see we have our three node cluster up and running. 
So that's all good. Now, the final step is adding Kibana. And well, we have added Kibana here already. Um, let me switch over to the Kibana setup. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to give Kibana the credentials to actually talk to Elasticsearch. So here you could add those credentials directly in plain text in the Kibana configuration, but don't do that. Use a key store that keeps them a bit more secure. Um, next up, what you want to do is you want to specify the user, um, which you want to use to connect to that. Um, for that, the one user that you should use is the Kibana system user. Um, that is the one that will actually allow you to um, talk to Elasticsearch um, securely here. Next up, we use the same password for that one, um, copying that over here as well. Um, and now, um, next step that we need to do is we need to link the Let's Encrypt certificate that we have generated before to the Kibana configuration as well. Um, let's have a quick look at what we have configured here. So Kibana is exposed on any interface. It can talk to any one of the Elasticsearch um, nodes via HTTPS um, on the external interface. We have SSL enabled for Kibana as well and configured where those certificates that we have just linked should be sitting around. Um, with that, Let's try to start Kibana itself. This might take a moment or two. Once that is done, we can then actually look up or check in our browser that the certificate is working as expected. For the user to connect in Kibana, that is the Elastic user again. So we remember Elastic user. This is the password that we're using um, in the background. Hopefully Kibana has started and should be available. So let's give that a try. Um, that should be Xera WTF 5601. Xera WTF um, 5601. This is where this should be living. This is trying to use HTTP by default, which is not working because we configured HTTPS. Let's see if um, adding HTTPS is making any difference. Luckily it is because that's exactly what we wanted here. Now that Kibana has loaded, let's log in with the Elastic user and the password that we have configured. Once Kibana has properly loaded up, then we can actually create more users in Kibana through the UI that we can then use to properly secure our server. So this was the very quick run through. Um, the one thing that you want to do now that this is available, um, you want to head over to the stack management and there you can then manage um, users and roles. So you can add the additional users that we might want to have in our system to use them. With that, I leave it at this. Um, if you want to read up on more of these topics, um, these are probably some good pages in the documentation to take a look at. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.